Okay. And here's the prop. It's not that. It These are just like mini quads, just a prop. How bad was it? I think I just broke props. Hey guys, welcome to Road to Road. I'm Chad. This is Steel. And today we're going to talk about these wondrous things. We've had some viewer response asking for the perfect props. So Steel, why don't you tell them what the perfect prop is? Well, I can tell you right now that the perfect prop doesn't exist. Why Damn is it. that? Well, each prop is designed for a specific purpose, and each purpose is different. So there is no perfect prop. You need to select the prop that suits what you want to do and what you hope to achieve and the way you want to fly for that purpose. Let's get into this. How about we talk about sizes steel? Why why have we got different sizes of props? All right So let's talk about the main the popular sizes that are out there right now There are plenty of different size props, but let's talk about the three that are mainly used in FPV Four inch five inch and six inch props now the difference between these props is obviously the surface area is changing Also the diameter of the prop is changing now the larger size prop you have the slower it's gonna spin in theory so obviously the slower it spins, the le less responsive the prop is going to be. So with a larger prop, yeah, you're going to gain power, but you're also going to lose a little bit on response because the prop is going to be spinning a little bit slower. So as you go down in prop size, you're going to gain some response, but you're going to lose a little bit of power to weight ratio. Now there's a sweet spot between all of these props and the sweet spot happens to be made by how power dense our batteries are these days so we're running these lithium polymer batteries so they obviously have a set weight and they have a set power output level if you were to decrease the weight and then stay with the constant output level then yeah you could probably go lower a lower size prop and get the same power to weight ratio but there is a sweet spot and that sweet spot that I've found and I think a lot of other pilots out there have found is the five inch prop now Chad why do you use five inch props and can you tell me a little bit about the design and differences of five inch props. Well, I use the the five inch prop simply because I've used a six inch prop before, and I didn't like the response. It felt a little bit less snappy, a little bit more doughy. Yeah, you got when you put a big motor on there and a big battery, you had more power and possibly some more speed with the really high power setups. Yeah. But I lost the response. And I think you use the like analogy of like a, an American muscle car would be a six inch prop quad. Yeah. And then as you go smaller, you get a little bit more exactly. towards that go-kart level. Yeah, yeah. You've got this. This is this is your, your four-door saloon car. And this is your... Aerial Atom. You, yeah, exactly. That's your, the the, the, the four-cylinder version. Because exactly. There is no eight-cylinder version yet because of the limitations of the battery. So, yeah, I found this to be a little bit less responsive. And the quad that I had to fly was way too much. But likewise, when I went down here, I had plenty of response, but I didn't have the power. So when I put a GoPro on there, I didn't have the power to recover from dives and what I was expecting to do. So the five-inch prop was the right smack bang in the middle where I can get the response that I want, but I've also got the thrust to carry what I want and the speed that I want. Yep. So it, it's, it's right there in the middle. Yeah, I mean, it comes down in the end to what you're trying to do. And at the end of the day, our goal is to carry a GoPro, which is a, basically 100 grams worth of just dead weight that you're throwing on the aircraft. And then you have about 150 grams of dead weight just in the battery. So you're looking at close to 250, almost the same weight as the aircraft in just dead weight. So if you're putting that dead weight onto an aircraft that weighs, I don't know, let's say an average four inch quad, maybe 200 grams, 250 grams, but you're losing about 30% of the thrust that you might get out of a five inch prop by only saving about 50 grams. So just the power to weight ratio, you can never get it with a smaller prop without sacrificing something. You never gain something without losing something else somewhere else. So yeah. you've always got to try and Im make the most of the improvements and deal with the disadvantages the best that you can. But you're never going to get something for free. So let's forget about the sizes. Let's talk about actual design. So one thing that I can do is I can get a smaller prop with the same surface area of the bigger prop by simply making a, what's called a bullnose prop where I can cut down a bigger prop down to small, uh, into a smaller diameter. This increases the surface area 
but you've also got a smaller size prop so you can spin it faster but with the same surface area. But what this does is make the prop very, very inefficient. So you're going to draw more amps for the amount of thrust that you're getting for it. So what ends up happening is you either have a shorter flight time or you have to put a bigger battery on there. So you end up with a heavier quad or... You and you can also hurt battery. the batteries. I you mean, can hurt these, the batteries. These batteries only can discharge so fast. They can only discharge so many amps. And I think a lot of the stuff these days, like the inflated C ratings and what these, the hype that people are going after, I mean, in all reality, there's people out there that say, yeah, I mean, I had one of these really high quality batteries and it died on me in like three days. But did they realize they were drawing 100 amps out of a battery that could only sustain 40? So there's a sweet spot. You need to be able to have the power to weight ratio. You need to be able to not hurt the battery when you're full throttle. And you also need to be able to run a prop that is fairly easily accessible. Mm -hmm. There's another way that you can go through it by adding blades. So you got a three blade prop. Yeah. So this has become a pretty uh, common and popular prop, mainly through uh, through Steel's flying. And I hated it. I mean, I didn't. I did not want to like it. I started flying tri blades at Drone Nationals. Um, I was stuck on the five by four forever, and I hated the thought of trying to go to a tri blade. Simply the fact that I was going to crash and I was going to lose a prop thirty percent more than I would on another prop because sometimes you can get away with like 50-50 chance of breaking a prop so it was just an expense thing I threw that prop on there and was blown away by how locked in it felt as far as how planted it was in the corners and you're increasing your surface area but you're also increasing the disc like space within within the air that you're flying in so tell us a little more about what, what the tri-blade has it over a two-bladed prop okay so Basically, what we're trying to achieve here is the same thing, but with two different props. So, this one you're trying to, you're both trying to increase the 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 surface area on these props. This by increasing the size of the actual prop, but you're decreasing the efficiency. What you're trying to do here is the same thing by adding a blade. You're not losing efficiency uh, in the same way, but what you're doing is you're increasing the surface area, which increases the drag. So, you're going to get a higher load. Uh, put on the motor and the battery, yeah. But probably not quite as bad as a situation because like of this. the efficiency yeah. loss. So they both have their negatives. They take it a slightly different way. But it's it's a matter of a number of things of how the prop design works as to which one is going to work for you. This will provide a little bit more thrust. Yeah, and but also this a little one bit is, more RPM. Yeah, but this one is a little bit more efficient. Yeah. So this one allows you to run a smaller battery than what this does. So typically you'd run an eighteen hundred milliamp hour pack. On this if you're yeah. pushing hard with this you can run a 1300 milliamp hour pack so the next question is okay well look we've got three blades yeah so why, why, wouldn't, why wouldn't we go yeah. to throw up four blades let's get six let's get let's get eight blades the efficiency drops and the surface area increases what happens with something like this is this has a certain amount of thrust yeah you're increasing the surface area by putting a fourth blade on there but you're also in, uh, increasing the amount of drag so what ends up happening is this will actually spin faster through the air than this does. And anyone who's done some testing with this will find out that this is actually faster and feels more uh, reactive and more yeah. more twitchy. And, and it's, it, it's, it certainly suits my flying style better than this does. But in a corner, this feels a lot more planted because there's more surface area. Yeah, it's biting the air a little bit better. So in a tight course, this will actually handle the corners a little bit better than this will. Yeah. So once again, it depends... What, what suits you? Yeah, I mean, we've tested all of these props. We've done line of sight. We've done an FPV version. I mean, every single thing we can possibly do to try to test every prop to see. Because, I mean, I've heard people say that the four-bladed prop is faster than the five-inch prop. No. I mean, more doesn't always equal faster. I mean, I, there is definitely something to be said about how the four-bladed prop feels. And I do think the four-bladed prop feels a lot more planted in a very low-speed but tight course. Now, the same thing with the three inch prop, you're gaining that more of a planted feel in the corners. You're also gaining a little bit more of surface area as far as like the thrust to weight ratio is gonna increase because you're basically getting the same thrust you would out of a six inch prop, but you're increasing the RPM of it. So you're getting the response that you would want out of a five inch prop with the thrust of a six inch prop without losing too much efficiency. So I think in the end, it all comes down to what you're trying to do. Now, for a general term, what, what would you use the four-bladed prop for? Well, I've found me personally, the, the real tight indoor racing tracks yep. really do suit the four-inch prop. Like the I'll, XTC stuff. Yeah, I, mean, that, I think that, that would work really that's well. That's great, where you don't have high-speed stuff going out there. So 
that suits me really well. Whereas for everyday freestyle flying, I absolutely adore the triple blade yeah. prop. That that works extremely well. There's been a lot of talk about hang time these days, and people are affiliating more blades with more hang time or a larger surface area, a larger disc area to give you more hang time. Okay, science alert. This is basic physics. When you roll upside down, you don't have any thrust. It's got to do with gravity. It's got nothing to yeah. do with the props. Roll yourself upside down, gravity will pull you yeah, down. I mean, in its technical sense, if you have flip upside down with more props, yeah, you've gained that little bit of extra thrust, so it should push you down to the ground faster. So when people are talking about hang time, hang time has nothing to do with props. You may gain a little bit of stability when you're upside down, and it's not really because you're upside down, it's just because you're gaining the stability overall because the prop is like just giving you that extra little bit of stability by increasing the blades. If you want more hang time, set the quad up right and practice. Yep. It's as simple as that. Okay, one other topic worthwhile con talking about is the pitch of the prop. And... You'll hear, say, for example, this has got a pitch of 4.5 inches, and what that basically means is every single time this does one revolution in a real perfect world, it's going to go forward four and a half inches. So as you increase the pitch, of course, it's going to go faster through the air for the same rotation. So one would think, hey, well, let's just make an insanely steep pitch, and we're going to get a really fast prop. The problem with that is it increases the surface area once again, increases the drag, uh, it decreases the efficiency and increases the amp draw. Increases the amp draw, so you get you get a lot of uh, negatives as well as positives. Remember, once again, you don't get any all the positives without getting some of the negatives as well. It's also worthwhile pointing out that we're hovering here, so we're flying through dead air. We're not flying pylon races that get on step once they get to hundred mile an hour. So there's a certain amount of pitch that we can't go past before it starts becoming really, really inefficient. And around the four and a half, five inch pitch is where it starts to become inefficient. This is a, a four inch pitch on this triple blade. And the way I like to think about this is this is like gears in a car. So you can only pick one gear. So for example, a four inch, uh, a four inch pitch is like being in third gear where a five inch pitch is being like fifth gear. When you hit a corner and you hit it in fifth gear, it, it doesn't want to come out of the corner bogs, very well. Yeah. It, it bogs down where a four inch uh, pitch is coming, hitting it at third gear or it's a third gear corner. It's actually going to hit it a lot smoother and come out. Sure, you're not going to have as much top speed as that, but if you've got a course that's got more corners in it, then the four inch pitch is going to be better suited for you. If you want a, a quad that only flies fast, then you go for a higher pitch. It Once again, it depends on the style of flying that yeah. you want to do. So for me, I'm more about doing the the uh, the technical tricks in the air and the feel of the quad and the response. So I go for a lower pitch. We also have stiffness in a prop. So, so you can yeah. see in these props, these types of props have they they have a lot of flex in them. Whereas you compare that to the five by four point five bullnose, it's very very stiff. And what's going to happen there is as this is spinning, this is actually going to want to flatten out the pitch because of the way that the prop works and the drag. And if you've got a prop that's very flexible, it's going to flatten out and it's going to actually reduce the amount of thrust given to AKA it. AKA the worst prop for this and the most amazing thing to hear is a gym fan 5x3. It is the, the loudest prop ever and I think it's because the prop is literally being forced flat. Um, and I don't know... I don't even know how that prop still exists, but um, yeah, it's kind of crazy how, how flexible these props can be and, and how, how they work. So we've gone over the three different sizes of props. There's a four inch, five inch, and six inch. I think we've established that the four inch is for nimble stuff. If you don't want to carry an HD camera, it's great. For six inch props, it's for heavy, heavier rigs. A little got a little bit more power, maybe not as top speed, but a little bit more low end thrust. And they're also a little smoother, maybe because they're heavier. The heavier the aircraft, the smoother it possibly can be in like some rough conditions, maybe higher winds. Um, and then there's the sweet spot prop, which is the five inch prop. And now you have a bunch of different sizes or a bunch of different pitches and a bunch of different designs that you might want to use. So you can, uh, to begin with, you can go with the bullnose prop, which is going to give you a lot of power and a lot of thrust, but at the cost of efficiency. You can go with a nice lightweight prop like the 5x4x3, which is going to give you a bit more efficiency. You're going to lose top speed and a little bit a little bit of the total thrust, but it's going to give you the agility. Yep. You can go with something like the, the 5x4x4, and that will give you a bit more planted uh, uh, 
cornering abilities, but you'll lose a little bit of the, the top speed, but it'll still be efficient. So yeah. it really depends on which way you want to go. Thanks for your input, guys. I hope you enjoyed this episode. This is for you guys answering some questions from the feedback you've got. So give us some more feedback on what you want to see. Comments. And if you liked what you saw, like and subscribe. So hopefully you've learned a little bit more here. I know I want to get out of here and do some flying. So thanks, guys. Let's get out of here. Ciao. Get it, BB. They dropped their price on Phantom 3 Professionals! Two. Oh god, that was on recording. <laughs> yes! <laughs> I hope that makes it.